This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 264 of The Real Word. Word is up. The world has gotten pretty real since the last episode, Nicole. For sure. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Good. That's all that, I feel fine. That's really all that matters. I've been at a big four bank this in, since I was, I don't know, since my first bank account. Yeah. I started, at, I started a bank account at Fleet. Oh my goodness. In Groton, Connecticut. I think I still have money well in that account because I had a fleet too and then it closed. What is it now? It's um... It's Bank of America. Oh, so that's how I ended okay. up at that's how I ended up at B of A. Okay. Fleet yeah, got, got bought out by there. B of A years ago. Years. It was something else and in just... between Fleet though and Bank of America. My ATM passcode, I don't even know if I should say this. Yeah. I'm not gonna say the passcode. Okay. But the passcode is the exact same as when I started my first bank account. So it's which probably like been... your birthday or something. 20 years ago. Look at you. No, it's not. It's It was the, 20, the generic 20 one. 20 years ago. Me. 20 years ago, you were still only 20. I mean, that's when you started banking? I was, eight, I was 18, 20 years ago. Yeah, that's when you started banking? Of course. I was a cash kid until then. What? Cash money. The only reason I started bank banking is because like, the only reason I started banking is because somebody gave me a check. <laughs> and did you pick Fleet because it was a bank from Fleet? I picked, I was. I was painting for this guy. Yeah. And uh, we're painting over the, you know, the Mystic Villages. Okay. We're painting the Mystic Villages. And at the end of the week, he gives me a check. Uh, His office was behind the fleet. So I walked around. And you opened up the a bank building account that day? To the front of the parking lot. And I said, uh, I need to cash this check. And they said, Well, you need to get a bank account with us, sir. Oh, well, at least I, I said, didn't Well, let's do it. To thinking that you had to get a credit card, too. You know? No, I didn't get a credit card. If I would have known, I could have gotten a credit yeah, card. Yeah, they were I doing that would've. on college campuses, like day one, all along. They just yeah, it's it's called student loans. the the big the bigger bubble <laughs> than regional banks. That's oh, what it's called. Boy. That's the biggest credit card on earth, and by the way, the biggest scam. But that leads us into anyway, the scam so of the glad week. You're well, yes. That leads us into the biggest scam of the week, Silicon Valley Bank. It was part of an ecosystem that sped up innovation. This is a Brad Inman piece over on Inman. Shout out to Brad. We love covering his stuff. We love Brad. Brad says he once tried to borrow money from a large commercial bank to grow his business, of course, being Inman, the bank officer. And Brad's been in other businesses too. Right. So um, maybe he's talking about one of his other businesses. The bank officer wanted, to, wanted collateral. So I offered up my library of editorial content. Wow. Maybe we can do that at BAM. Maybe I can go borrow some money for, you know, offering up the last What did he think he was, 200... like the Beatles? He thought he was the Beatles. <laughs> the, last, the last 265 episodes of The Real World. Hit the thumbs up if you think I should go pull a big loan. Now that SVP is not oh, in business boy. anymore, I can't. He was confused and said he could only attribute value to the cost of the physical disk drives where they were stored. Okay, so not the content itself, but just the disk drives. I was furious, demoralized, and discouraged. Is that Later, how he talks? I borrowed money. Are you talking like he is? Is that what's happening here? No. Oh. No, I'm not. I don't think this is how Brad talks no. at all. This is my interpretation of his story. Okay. Nicole. Later, Brad borrowed money from Silicon Valley Bank for several of his companies. They understood the digital age, supported entrepreneurs, and understood our needs. It was part of an ecosystem that helped make innovations possible. It certainly helped me. I paid off the loans and remain forever grateful to SVB for taking a chance on me. SVB was in business, Nicole, for 60 years, okay? So this isn't like some bank that got started up the last 10 or 20 right. years, funded Silicon Valley, and then made a bunch of mistakes and went out of business. This had six decades of banking experience. It was a top 20 bank in America and happens to now be the second largest bank collapse in US history. Signature, which followed a day later, is the third largest bank collapse. Okay, so um, Brad goes on to say this bank failure was initially viewed as a regional story, but it's much bigger than that. It certainly is much bigger than that because a lot of these, Nicole, you know what they like to say about tech people? They like to call them tech bros. A lot of these tech bros. They would give you money. Venture capitalists would give you money. Nicole, you're starting a little tech company. Mm -hmm. You you want to do um, digital soap? Maybe maybe soap? you got a vision digital? for digital soap. No, I like the real. Okay. I like to be clean. I like the real soap. But no, no, no. Maybe this is your vision, uh, though. You want to start? It sounds like your vision. But let's go. This is this is your vision. You want to start digital soap? Okay. 
And, uh, you know, I'm a VC and I'm like, okay, I'll give you some money. I like, <clears throat> I like the smell of this, okay. this digital soap. Mm -hmm. I give you money yep. with the condition that you've got to keep it at SVB because we're going to get special perks in the club, right? the club of SVB. So you had a lot of, this was a, classified a regional bank, but you just had a lot of the tech industry operating there. Spencer Raskoff, former CEO of Zillow, had over a hundred or just about a hundred of his startups with some type of banking relationship. He's the biggest, he's the, I call him the kingpin of venture capital in tech, uh, in prop tech, right? Real estate technology. Yep. He had a hundred companies. He was one of these advocates of saying the government needs to do something now, it needs to do something now. You, you see a lot of venture capitalists, uh, David Sachs, David Freeberg, uh, Jason Kalkanis, all of the All In podcasts, these guys are, you know, uh, uh, David Sachs started PayPal, yep. right? A lot of these tech people are like, they've got to do something. This is going to have a cascading effect. Right. This is going to impact all of these regional banks. Um, and there's a debate there. Well, maybe this wasn't going <clears> to, <throat> you know, this was a business bank for tech people. Maybe it wouldn't have, you know, um, inundated the regional bank in your little town. So Brad goes on to say, trash talk the San Francisco Bay Area if you need to, but like it or not, it's still home to almost all of the major technology breakthroughs of the last 60 years. I completely agree with him. And I also agree with uh, all the tech guys saying, and gals saying that, well, if we, if we don't do something here for all of these small businesses and large businesses that are banking with uh, SVB, yep. if we don't do something, innovation in America will stop for the next 10 years. And if we stop innovation for the next 10 years, what's going to happen? Another country will pass us up in that category of innovation. You already see uh, two of the made the other two major countries, Nicole, yep. you know, you see them teaming up, you know, because America, America, by the way, has spent more money overseas on some, there's like some thing, a little fight going on over there. A little one. They, they've spent more money on that then they're going to do on this this SVB situation. There was a debate, should we should we do it or not? Uh, they spent no money in East, East Palestine, Ohio, because it's not on one of the major coasts. Uh, but I, I go back to what Brad's saying. The run on Silicon Valley Bank was aggravated by the ease of which you can wire money using your smartphone. Uh, during the Great Depression, 9,000 banks failed after a run on banks. Um, da, 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 we live in a digital age. SVB management made some decisions last week that are questionable. Some decisions, Brad, that are questionable. Uh, they went to really high risk uh, moves. They, Nicole, they would take money from a startup. Right. And then they'd go loan it out to another startup. Right. Okay. They got into these, they took short term money and invested into long term high risk. Right. I don't think some moves that are questionable, the CEO should never work again. He should be in litigation for the next 10 years. Yeah. Well, it sounds like he probably will be. He should be. Yeah. Okay. And, and for the last two days, I've covered this on the Hashi. So if you need more information on this, you can go to the Hashi. I want to just bring this back to what Brad is saying. Nicole, agree or disagree that banks like this that are willing to invest in businesses should exist. I, I mean, I think that's an obvious, Obviously. right? They should exist. Right. Um, you know, Open Door was one of the banks that used uh, SVB. Realtor.com. We have a relationship with Realtor.com. They have a, a relationship with SVB. Yeah. Ojo. Tomo. Yep. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, Airbnb. Right. Okay. So a lot, a lot of these tech companies that uh, are here today may not exist without this opportunity. Now, Nicole, are you in the camp that if you had like Roku had a half a billion in their account and you're only insured up to 250,000, right. should Roku get wiped out? I don't think Roku should get wiped out. No. Why do you like it using Roku? I do like my Roku. Four things. Yes. My family loves their Rokus. Roku. Well, you don't have a Roku? Well, I'm in the camp that, you know, Roku's got some really fancy CFO who probably went to some really fancy school. And if, and if him and I were, her and I were in a coffee shop, that person would look down through their nose at a at a player like me, you know. And okay. so that CFO should have been smart enough to, uh, you know, have their money not in a half a billion in one checking account, but spread around. So I don't actually care about Roku. I wouldn't have. I'm a pure capitalist, Nicole. I wouldn't have cared if Roku went out of business at all. 
I do care about the small businesses who don't have the time to research, you know, how SVP is l lending out their money and all right. that kind of stuff. And I do think that they, we needed to come in and protect them. We, en we decided to protect depositors 100%. If there happens to be a run in the bank, I don't know how we do that. Regional banks, Nicole, for real estate agents, how important are they for your buyers to have access to regional banks as opposed to the big four? Because if there's a run on the, on the banks, everybody's going to go to the big four. How important are regional banks for residential real estate? This is where I kind of want to end this conversation okay. off with, you know, your buyers, do they typically use big four banks? Do they typically use regional banks? Do they typically use lenders how important is it for buyers to have options multiple options for their mortgage needs no i think it's it's wildly important again because each situation is so different where you know to just have access to i mean it's why we use a it's why i use a lender it's why we advocate for using lenders so that they have the access to multiple um, you know, types of loans that satisfy their need. Again, if you're self-employed or, you know, God forbid you were in through a bankruptcy, you know, there, there, there definitely needs to be options for the consumer. So, um, yeah, I think it's wildly important to have, to have the, the options. I agree. Yeah. If you, if you're left to the big four banks, by the way, Wells Fargo got out of the mortgage business. So they're out of mortgage business, except for some high wealth clients and then some um, underserved communities, okay? But everything in between, they're out on, they're, they're selling off loans. So if you're left with what? Bank of America, City, and JP Morgan Chase? Yeah. I mean, how many buyers do you hear saying, man, I, I really got the best deal at B of A? Mm -hmm. You don't hear that too often, right? okay? It's, it's usually a local lender um, that's giving them the best option. So we need regional banks. We need a strong banking system in America. We we need competition even at the banking level. And so if you get rid of regional banks, it's going to reduce the amount of companies that are willing to provide a mortgage quote for buyers, which serves up the biggest opportunity right. for wealth in this country, for families and generations. For development. I mean, usually de we need usually those smaller regional banks are absolutely. the ones that are supporting local development in their towns too. Yes. So if they're looking to build, again, residential real estate or even commercial buildings, um, I mean, those are the ones that these local guys are going to because they see each other in the coffee shops. They yes. know their families. They're coaching them in football um, and they're willing to invest in the vision so um, I think it's vital to um, communities and development of communities and maintaining communities um, just as much as it is getting a homeowner you know to purchase a, a property too yeah so so ultimately I agree and um, and I think that ultimately I do think the government did the right thing by assuring depositors will be made whole yeah. in a perfect world. I think it's probably too complicated. I would have loved them to pick and choose winners like Roku. <laughs> you're a loser. Um, you, you know, you've got a fancy CFO, get screwed, small bank. I'm going to protect you. That probably would take in too much time. They had to say all or nothing. Right. They went with all if given just those two choices, I, I would have said the same thing. <laughs> and ultimately I also agree with Brad's take on, um, you know, you do need some, some innovation now. I think SVB though has been exposed as a club and, um, and, and that's why th this was the shoe to drop. It's why, you know, I believe tech is the biggest bubble of the last 10 years, not, not definitely not real estate. Right. And so, yeah, we, we need innovation in this country. I just don't necessarily think, um, you need an S San Francisco club, right. uh, r running the show there and taking all this risk. I covered Spencer's 23 tweet thread this morning on the hot sheet. So if you're interested on more of his thoughts about it, you can check that out. Uh, from one tech conversation to another, to another. Nicole, on nowbam.com, Plunk. If you haven't heard of Plunk, their website is Get Plunk. Plunk partners with three tech startups to shake up the real estate industry. Plunk, the world's first and so far only real-time AI-driven property valuation platform is partnering with emerging prop tech disruptors to revolutionize mortgage lending, housing inventory, and influencer marketing. I wonder if Plunk or some of these partners were at SVB and they just got bailed out by, uh, or depositors rather, got bailed out and they could be a depositor. 
Uh, Plunk combines AI machine learning and image analysis to provide real-time comprehensive property valuations that help homeowners identify renovation projects with the best ROI. Okay, so uh, you've heard a lot about ChatGPT. You've heard about Google's BARD. Uh, but Plunk can consistently deliver on its promises, okay? Sometimes you put something in ChatGPT, it doesn't deliver on its promises. It will change the way homeowners, real estate professionals, and property investors value and invest in real estate. Uh, they're tracking over 104 million properties yep. in real time. Nicole, what do you like about Plunk? Well, it's funny because immediately I feel like we should revisit the whole appraisal issue because again yeah sure. i mean for man how long has that been going on like a year and a half almost two years you know you you kept saying that there's got there's going to be a disruptor for you guys there's going to be something that comes in and can very easily do your job and it seems like plunk is potentially um that disruptor for for the appraiser so it's very interesting i will be honest this is the first that i've heard of plunk it's the first that i've read about plunk um, i think it's an incredible tool again especially it sounds like as a homeowner you're able to even upload photos of renovations that you've done and, and that helps you determine sort of what your roi is on that um, i it's a very interesting tool i mean obviously again it almost sort of potentially sort of scrubs the real estate, you know, individual down a little bit too, especially if you are an investor and, and interested in a, in a certain property, this, this plunk is going to, is going to give you some valuations. Um, obviously again, like we say every week, you know, show your value, know your market, be the resource. So I think that this though could potentially be a lovely tool for a realtor too, um, to at least start learning. I mean, how many times mm. are agents like, Hey, I need some help there. You know, I have an investor interested in an investment property or getting into the Airbnb, Airbnb game, um, where here's a really great tool for them to start getting their feet wet and really knowledgeable, um, you know, sort of in that field. But overall, I think it's, I think it's very interesting. I've been enjoying the chat GBT. Is that what it's called? Right. I, yeah. man, I, I go on there and, 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 and use it all the time. So again, I, I think it'll just be another sort of like tool and like your tool belt. Um, but again, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens for the appraisal world. Cause this really could be again, that, 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 that disruptor that you have been looking for in that. There was field. an article on, on, uh, Inman, I think recently that talked about, how AI is not going to destroy the agent. It could be these lawsuits, but then AI could be what brings the agent back into the fold after the lawsuit in a different way. To your point, these tools are going to become a part of our everyday yeah. use over the next 10 years in one way or another. One of Plunk's biggest draws is to pr uh, promise, um, is its promise to provide not only the real time dynamic value of every home, but also the future remodeled value, including insights into renovation projects. Right. I love that. Love it. Um, uh, and what could be a subtle dig at Zillow's Zestimate, the Plunk website beamens the fact that AI-driven models too often act as mysterious algorithms that operate with an undisclosed set of rules. Their aim is to provide an unprecedented level of transparency. And if they pair that with a reliable accuracy, they stand a decent chance of becoming the new gold standard. If they become the gold standard, then certainly that appraisal disruptor that I've been calling for could very well be here. Could all appraisers have gotten dunked by Plunk? Read about it on nowbam.com and let me know what you think in the comments. Could this become the new gold standard that all appraisals are uh, referencing? Okay, let's move on move to- on. It's funny though, do you ever play the game Kerplunk? When you were a kid? Mm -mm, oh, no. really? I wasn't a Kerplunker, no. Stop it. No. Seriously? You never played Kerplunk? I mean, did you ever play did you ever play Mike Tyson knockout? I mean, yeah, I had a brother, but like Kerplunk <laughs> was like it's a board game. Anyway, that's a shame. Well, I'll bring Kerplunk in next time. I'll show you how to play. Yeah, don't bother. Uh Elon <laughs> Musk's planned Texas Fiefdom. Fiefdom? Fiefdom. I like I like Fife. Elon Musk's planned Texas town is a billionaire tradition from Ohio to Hawaii to Arkansas. Wealthy tycoons have a long history of building communities molded around their personal philosophies. And this, uh, 
first of all, I got this article and it reminded me of one two weeks ago from CNN. Yeah. Uh, CNN politics. Uh, we're not going to link this one up, but you can you can search for it if you're really interested. Just go CNN Trump town. Trump <laughs> proposes building 10 freedom cities and flying cars. Yeah. I was reading this article yeah. and I like got to the bottom. I was like, can I get those two minutes of my life back? Oh, like, yeah. Yep. You know, obviously he's running for re-election president yeah. again. And uh, th there's no chance we're going to have flying cars in the next four to six years, Trump. So take that out of your pitch. That's not happening. I'd love to have a town with flying cars. I think Elon could get oh us my there gosh. first. We've and... had this conversation, remember? I think, yeah. I think it's like episode four. No, no, no. Actually, we were talking about do we want to live in like space and be like the um, who are those that cartoon? What was the cartoon? You know, the cartoon? Jetsons. The Jetsons. Yes. And I was yeah. talking about I like uh, grass and you're like, no, I agree. I like grass. I'd love that. I, love I think that Elon could get us there faster. I would love oh, a I'm brand sure. new town. Yeah. Now, listen, if you're going to do a brand new town, you should have brand new rules. It should be its own little country. What if you were going to start a country from scratch, Nicole? What rules would you implement? That, that'd be something uh, to think about. In rural, that would be interesting. Rural County, just east of Austin, Texas, Elon is assembling his very own town. New streets, mm -hmm. recreational facilities, yeah. schools, subsidized housing for employees of Tesla, SpaceX and the Boring Company. I'll be honest, um, though, that's not that's not rare, though, in Texas. Like most communities yeah. are having to build schools because of the amount of buildings or homes that are being built. So this isn't like totally bonkers, but yeah, Victoria's Secrets billionaire Les Wexner built up New Albany, Ohio, from yeah. a tiny, uh, tiny community, and others, to your point, have done this. I'd be interested to see what Alon. It's not Elon, it's Elon. Okay, Elon. Did you know that? No, it, no, I didn't. I'd be interested to see what Elon does with how he makes the streets, what technology he uses, and could that not be the future of how we you know, build infrastructure right. in other towns? Uh, certainly in the Northeast, we need, we've need. we got a long way to go with infrastructure. Well, I think what's interesting about it, though, too, is that he's giving subsidized, some sort of subsidized housing to his employees. So right. what a great way to, you know, for to keep your employees not just mm. happy, but uh, well, he, they're not quitting he, he can, on you because where are they going to go? He can come in here, buy this land. Yeah. To your, to your point, give them a reduced cost on housing at a time when housing is at an all time high. Uh, make it really easy for them to get to work. Right. Okay. Well, you don't have a commute. You're right here in our backyard. We're going to build up uh, our offices right here within our new town. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you, again, you have to watch Severance because it's like the same. It's like the same thing, and they put a chip. They put a chip in the people's heads, and if they're at work, they don't. They cannot remember the outside world, and when they're in the outside world, they can't remember work. It's bonkers but anyway everybody at bam we're gonna do that okay so <laughs> we're gonna put a chip in matt leonetti's head just shot just saw matt at the That's uh so funny. The broke agent the wedding. wedding yeah it was a good and, time uh, he doesn't know this but i put a chip in his yeah. in his head while he was while i was eating his actually he didn't touch his salad by the way no no okay, okay let us know in the comments what, what would be the first thing you do if you were building a town or if you were moving to a new town what would you look for love to know from you in the comments um down below. All right, Nicole. Good, good Great show. show. Yeah, I love yep. it. Uh, if, if you guys are interested in creating content, we've got an ebook down below. Haley, link up the ebook on video equipment for uh, for every budget down below. So if you're starting to create some content for your local market, make sure you pick that up. Uh, Nicole, yes. we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Yeah, enjoy. Keep it real. See you guys.